All right, hey guys, this is Mr. Manning, and this is going to be a very short video about using a couple of things in Photoshop that we discussed in class. Uh, the first one is using the uh, magic wand selection tool, and the second one is using the quick selection tool. Uh, we've already talked about a few th ways that you can select objects. Uh, the magnetic lasso, the polygonal lasso, even the rectangle selection tool will all work. Uh, these two tools that we're going to talk about today are pretty useful whenever you are selecting objects of the same color or similar color. And what I mean by that is um, if you're going to select something that you know is all one solid color or just has slight variations of color in it, the uh, magic wand and the quick selection tool can actually do it much faster than the magnetic lasso. So let's go ahead and get to it and on this first picture that I have pulled up, uh, it's called Mountain Top, we are going to use the magic wand selection tool and what we're going to do is we're actually going to select the uh, entire sky so that we can make it uh, a different color and give the picture a little bit of a different uh, feel to it. So the magic wand selection tool is directly beneath the lassos. Uh, if I do a right click on it you can see that the magic wand and the quick selection are actually in the same spot. I'm going to click on the magic wand tool when I do that, up across the top, my options bar changes, just like uh, it always does whenever we select a new tool. And um, a couple things that I want to point out to you. All right, so I just changed my tolerance to 32. Let's talk a little bit about what tolerance is and why I would want to change it. So tolerance is a number, and it can be anywhere from 0 all the way up to 255. The higher the number, the more colors that Photoshop will tolerate. So if I have a really high number, it's not going to matter where I click, it's going to select almost the entire picture because it's going to tolerate a lot of color. And if I have a low number, no matter where I click at, it's not going to select very much at all because it's not tolerating very many colors. So let's do a quick little experiment here. Uh, I am currently on the tolerance of 32. I'm going to take my cursor down here to this blue area and do one left click. All right, when I do that, you can see that Photoshop has made a selection of all this blue area here. Um, it did not select any of the mountain, and it also did not select any of the clouds. The reason is, is because with a tolerance of 32, it is not uh, tolerating these other colors, the white kind of grayish colors in the cloud and the darker black colors in the mountain. All right, I'm going to deselect that and I am going to adjust my tolerance up to 100. This time I can click in almost the exact same spot and I will get different results because I am tolerating more colors. So I'm going to do one left click and this time it was able to tolerate more so it did include my, the clouds in this selection. However, it still wasn't high enough to include the black background. If I wanted to, I could continue to play with this. I could go up and down and get different uh, tolerances and different selections. But since I want to select the, um, uh, the sky, this is actually a pretty good tolerance to use. Okay. The other thing that I want to talk about with the quick, uh, magic wand is this little thing here called contiguous. All right, contiguous is just a option box that you can click on or click off. If contiguous is selected, meaning it's got a check mark in it, uh, you are telling Photoshop that you only want it to select colors that are touching each other. And if contiguous is not selected, you are telling Photoshop that it is okay to jump over colors so that you can select others even if they're not touching the original area. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to zoom in close to my guy that's standing here on the mountain. You can see when I first selected this um, I had contiguous on and Photoshop selected all of this area but it did not select anything between him and the staff that he's holding or this area between his legs or this area between his arm and his body. That did not get selected. The reason why is because the contiguous feature was not allowing Photoshop to select areas that didn't touch each other. Now 
I'm going to deselect my image. I'm going to turn contiguous off. My tolerance is staying the same. And I'm going to click in this blue area one more time. This time, since contiguous was turned off, I can now select this area, this area, and this area, even though they are not touching the rest of the original selection. For this particular picture, that's really what I want. Uh, because I want to make a change to the sky and I want this area uh, near the person to also change. So let's do a real quick change just kind of for practice. I'm going to change the color of the sky. I ha already have it selected so I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. You can play with the slider left and right. It really doesn't matter to me what color you want to make the sky. I always like to make it a red color. kind of gives it a feel like the person is standing um, on top of a volcano or something. I deselect it and I was able to change the color of the sky. All right, so that is the quick review of the magic wand tool. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the quick selection tool. So I'm going to get rid of the mountaintop and I'm going to use the Starbucks cup for the uh, quick selection tool. All right, quick selection tool. It is in the same area as the magic wand. It works kind of the same way as the magic wand, except for instead of doing a single left click and hoping that it selects the area you want, it actually allows you to move the selection slightly and Photoshop will start to learn what areas that you want to include in your selection and it will include those. So I've clicked on the quick selection tool when I did that, my cursor became a circle, and it's got a little plus symbol in the middle. The plus symbol means that I am going to add to my selection. Uh, there's also a subtraction uh, symbol. Uh, both of those are up here on the options bar. You can switch between the two. The subtraction tool would be that I want to subtract from my selection. Okay, uh, I don't have a selection yet, so I'm gonna start with the plus symbol. Uh, I'm gonna start up here in the top left-hand corner do a single left click and hold it and very slowly start dragging out towards the cup. As I do that Photoshop is going to start to expand my selection and here in a moment it is going to actually snap itself to the side of the cup. Alright, it just did it. At this point I probably want to let go of my left click. When I let go Photoshop really quickly saves that selection. Um, the reason I like to do that is because I want to be able to back up if I have to and if I never let go of the left click uh, and I make a mistake, if I use the Control alt z to back up, it's actually going to think that I did only one step and it's going to start all the way from scratch. So the way I like to use this tool is by every time uh, Photoshop selects a big chunk of space, I let go of the left click so that I can save, temporarily save that selection. Okay, I'm going to continue going around the side of the cup. I'm holding left click now and I'm going to start to push out again. Alright, it just picked up another chunk so I let go of left click. Start again. And you just keep on going all the way around. Oh, I got a really large chunk there. Okay, down here at the bottom. Um, Right now, my circle is maybe just a little too big to get through this space. If you want to change the size of your selection tool, you can use the brackets on your keyboard. The right bracket will make your selection larger. You see how my circle is getting bigger at this point? And the left bracket will make your selection tool smaller. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can get through this bottom area here. So I'm doing a left click and holding. I'm still dragging around. Now at some point you might make a tiny mistake. Uh, Photoshop might include a little more than you wanted it to include. For instance, let's say I accidentally bump my elbow or something and I go into this cup area on accident. Um, it's really easy to correct. Uh, you just go up to the subtraction tool and you start pushing it back out. So now you're telling Photoshop, do not include this space. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to switch back to my plus symbol. 
If you don't want to click up here at the top, you can actually use Shift and Alt to turn to go back from plus and minus, kind of like we did when we were making corrections to our selections. All right, I'm going to finish this selection by pushing on up here. All right, and Photoshop finally snapped it. So I've got this whole area selected. All right, very last thing for this video, I want to show you how to remove the background of a picture. Um, there's a lot of times in Photoshop where you're going to have a picture that you're working with and you only want a certain part of it. Uh, so like for instance on this picture, let's say that I want just this cup. I don't really care about the table that the cup is sitting on or this background area. So I am going to erase that area. And the way you do that is you make a selection of what you want to erase, like we already did. And then you're going to go over here to the Layers menu, or the Layers uh, task pane. It's in the bottom right corner here. And I am going to unlock this layer. It's really easy to do. You hover your mouse above the layer itself, so I'm uh, right above the background. I'm going to double click once. This window comes up, and I hit OK. Now, nothing happened to my picture. It looks exactly like it did before, except now the name of my layer is layer zero, and it no longer has the little lock symbol. That means this layer is now unlocked, and I can erase it if I want to. Once I've unlocked the layer, I'm gonna go over here to my eraser tool. It's about halfway down on your toolbar. I'm gonna choose the regular eraser. Don't pick the background eraser. I don't think it works very well and it always leaves like a little bit behind. So I'm just gonna select the regular eraser tool. Um, just like the quick selection tool, I can change the size of my eraser with my brackets, left to make it smaller, right to make it larger. Since I want to erase all of this, I'm gonna make my eraser pretty large. I just go over to the area I want to erase and do a left click and hold it and drag it all the way around the edge. Okay, the um, background has been erased. Uh, it is now a checkerboard in Photoshop. Checkerboard means that it is clear. At this point, if I wanted to, I could move this to something else. I could put another picture behind it. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with it after you have removed the background. Okay guys, uh, thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you later.